Well, I can honestly say I've never decided to stress myself out so much in such a short amount of time. Welcome back to the Scale Builders Guild. Thanks again for watching. Today, it's the 24 hours of mayhem. Josh from Harley Designs and myself have decided to take the stock Axial SCX-10 III base camp and modify them, make them our own, make them what they are not now, whether that be performance upgrades, whether that be cosmetic upgrades, whether that be anything at all, we're doing it. And we're doing it in 24 hours. The clock starts for me at 3 p.m. Eastern Saturday, which is now ish seven minutes from now this is starting uh, i'm going to be documenting this over the next 24 hours maybe not sleeping very much also going out for dinner and going out for brunch the next day <laughs> there are priorities in life and food is one of them but we're going to take these stock trucks and we're going to dress them up whether it be through fabricating or some creative means we're going to be changing these trucks and making them not at all what they are now we actually decided to have a live chat prior to getting started on this, just to nail down the rules. So I'm gonna to cut to that now. You got your stock truck now in front of you? Talking to each other. Yeah, it's right here. This Improve is still it. stock. I haven't done a single thing to it. Nothing has changed. I'm taking the top off. Still totally still normal in there. The only thing that's changed, and this happened before, I took okay. the receiver out. Oh. That's it. Okay. <laughs> I, I needed it for some, <laughs> another build, so I took it out. But okay. otherwise, it is completely stock in every way, shape, and form. Same with mine. Even has the nut covers on still. So. Mm-hmm. Yep. I may have at one point taken a tire off, well, a wheel and tire off, but it's back on there. Yes. Same here. Everything else okay. is right. stock, stock. So Stock. Stock. Bone Our stock. outline slash rules for this are very few. Yes. The it's tw it's the simplest hours. mayhem we've ever done. Exactly. Twenty four hours we're giving each other. That's it. Just twenty four. Not more. Not less. <laughs> not a minute That's less. It. Not a minute more. <laughs> Just twenty four. Other than we're going to do like a short show. live video. Uh, yes. Tomorrow. Maybe. Well, pr tomorrow. No, today. No, th three days ago. Three days ago, we're gonna do a short live video, <laughs> which we'll link to, yeah, and, time which is linked is in the description below, probably. Check that out, <laughs> yeah. hopefully below. <laughs> like and subscribe. Uh, Ring the notification bell, because if you, I mean, we've already missed it. Yeah. I've answered as many of we, Matt's comments <laughs> as possible, and I love to hear your feedback. That would be great. All right. So yes, the only rule, uh, other than that it's in 24 hours, is that we have to continue to use the stock body. We that have came to use, with the, the body has, not, so has to be used. We have to use this. The creme. Has to be used. In what way? I'm not here to knows. judge. So, uh, that's obviously, not my, that's not my we're, place. we're both going to be pushing for custom work rather than just part slapping. Yep. But we've Hopefully. left it wide open. We're not tracking budget, anything like that. So, no, nope, no budget on this. Uh, you, we could conceivably in 24 hours, this could be the most expensive mayhem we've ever. I mean, done. It, it could. It's hard. To, we never had a budget. We never <laughs> probably, had a budget cap probably. on mayhem. So, that's good. Mm, that's true. Yeah. All right. Okay. Okay. Um, I I know that. I mean, you've got a lot of different ways that you're going at this, and I've got a lot of, a lot of different ways. We're going to talk about that after this is over. Yes, I'm not telling so you my plans now. It for each other. I'm not telling you what no, I'm doing. No, absolutely not. You're, you get to know nothing. You know, so. I like it. That's it. Uh, the <laughs> clock is going to start in 18 minutes. Oh boy. So. I'm already kind of nervous. Cause um, I, I don't know if I told you this, but I have a dinner tonight that's gonna eliminate a few hours. And then I've also got a brunch tomorrow. Well, I'm not so. planning on sleeping, so I <laughs> am going to put in maximum effort. <laughs> All right. Uh, and that's that's basically it. They're still completely stocked. Nothing has changed, and uh, we're going to um, make them special. So let's see what we can do. Um, 
You get no yeah. other hints. So as you can see, not a lot of actual rules. <laughs> Have fun. Spend as much money as you want. Don't sleep. Use the body. That's basically it. Use the body. And we'll see where this ends up. Uh, my plan is probably not as ambitious as Josh's. I am definitely going a much more cosmetic route. Uh, I have a lot of parts and accessories that I'm going to be adding, changing from the original stock truck uh, with a tiny emphasis on performance, definitely more hopefully in the looks department. So we're gonna see how that goes. It's time to start the clock in six minutes. Knowing me, you know that I'll probably go a much more cosmetic route than anything. Uh, we're about to fire up the Prusa i3 Mark III Plus. Uh, we've got a ton of parts from Knight Customs for the metric body, which is actually the same body that they're using here. It's just a one-piece mold. So a lot of those metric parts will fit on here. Uh, we're going to get the printer fired up. Uh, it's just going to be printing madly for this whole 24 hours. We'll see how many things we can get done on that. Uh, we've got some ideas for dressing up the rear of this truck, making it not so flat tonneau cover style. We're actually going to do something to that rear bed back there. Uh, we're definitely going to get rid of these stickers for windows uh, and get the elbow grease flowing. I will be uh, recording throughout this process, so you will get little bits and pieces of progress as we're going through this video, so you can see what's happened, what's changing. Um, maybe we'll even do some time lapse for some of the more boring parts of this build. Uh, but the idea and the goal is to make a vastly better looking truck and a slightly better performing truck with whatever I happen to have on hand. Because I literally didn't buy anything for this project specifically. I've got a lot of stuff though, so it's a deep parts bin. At least we have that going for us. Um, yeah. If you had 24 hours and unlimited funds and an unlimited parts bin, what changes would you make to the base camp? Uh, keeping in mind, you do have to keep the body. <laughs> so put a comment down below. Let me know what you're thinking. I love reading through your feedback and I try to answer as many of them as I can. Who do you think is going to win this? Not that either of us are actually going to be losers in this. I mean, you know, not any more than we already are. <laughs> Who do you think is going to end up with a better, more gooder performing truck? <laughs> put that down below too. If you love our monthly mayhems, and in this case, daily mayhem, hit the like button. Subscribe if you haven't already and ring that notification bell so you get updates anytime there's a new video from the Scale Builders Guild. And seeing as we are coming up on 3 o'clock p.m. Eastern, it's time we get started. Give ourselves 24 hours. So there we go. What could possibly go wrong? <laughs> Let's see what happens. This is gonna be fun. I have some ideas, but not a real like plan. It's gonna be like a Jackson Pollock painting. <laughs> I'm just going to throw a bunch of stuff at it and see what sticks. I think the first thing we're going to do is get rid of these window stickers. Uh, we are going to start wet sanding this uh, paint away from underneath and uh, get some clear windows going. So um, that's going to be the toughest step, I think. So we might as well get started right away. This sanding is going to take forever, but luckily I've got the time. <laughs> oh, we're already getting through the blue paint. Perfect. It'll be clear before you know it. <laughs> All right, so while we're getting started on the body, we might as well get the Prusa fired up and starting to print some things. Uh, and we're gonna start printing some metric elements from Knight Customs for this uh, body, which will, should work just fine. So that's gonna get started right now and take six hours and 37 minutes. Dang. Boy, there sure is a lot of paint on there. Oh, but that's good. That's because there's a sticker under there. No problem. No problem whatsoever. And there goes the printer. We're cooking with gas. Okay, 47 minutes in. All the windows are now clear. Uh, they are a bit hazy, and that's to be expected because we are using a pretty heavy grit sandpaper to get that paint off. I could spend some more time buffing it and uh, really cleaning it up, um, but uh, yeah, I think for now that's a pretty good start. There's a lot of other things I want to do to this body, 
Um, but I think we'll move on to some more mechanical stuff. Get some different uh, things going on with the actual chassis. So let's move on to that next. While this is 24 hours of mayhem, I am not, I'm not really cutting any corners. Like, I'm, I'm going in here and removing all this glue residue from the old ESC. We're going to clean this up as much as we possibly can. And, you know, I want to be proud of the end result. I don't want it to look or feel rushed. So I'm really, like, I'm going above and beyond here. Because <laughs> I want it to look good. 22 hours, 53 minutes. Okay, so we just got rid of the stock motor and stock ESC, uh, and we're gonna be replacing that with a Castle uh, censored brushless four pole motor. Uh, which one is this? This is the 1900 kV, so not a lot of wheel speed, uh, but certainly a lot of smooth low end power, which is always sort of my preference. Mamba X uh, is going to be the ESC of choice to go with this motor. Uh, it's a great combo. It's one I had actually lying around in a uncompleted build. So pulled it out of there and we'll be installing it in the base camp. Now that we've got the ESC and the motor installed, uh, we just need a receiver, we'll get to that shortly. Uh, we're gonna swap out that stock steering servo for something with a little more power uh, we're going to use a Reefs 422HD V2 servo. That Reefs servo will give you about 400-ish ounce inches of torque, which is going to be a massive improvement over the stock uh, steering servo. So let's get that installed. One thing to note on this uh, tri-plastic servo mount that they've got on the SCX-103 base camp, uh, depending on your servo and its width or depth, you may need to trim a little bit of plastic away from the actual mount uh, along the actual C-channel uh, or chassis rail there in order to fit your servo. I had to do that with this reef servo and now it just fits perfectly. So keep that in mind. Since we're gonna be adding all of that power in the reef servo, we might as well help reinforce the axle itself. The base camp does come with the metal panhard mount for the chassis uh, but the mount on the actual axle is still plastic. We can help reinforce that with the Bauhaus RC Panhard Reinforcement Mount. We're going to add that to the axle right now. And since we're here and there's space for one, let's throw in a CompSpec Reefs Servo Winch. I think it's always cool to have a winch on a truck, especially one that's going to be optioned out. Why not add one? I've got it handy. I was gonna put it in a comp truck, but I'll put it in this truck for now. Okay, we've got the majority of the new electronics installed. There is a receiver now, uh, and both the servo and the servo winch are installed. I haven't yet added the actual uh, cable for that servo. We can do that later as we get into more of the cosmetic stuff. Uh, but mechanically, I think this is pretty much all we're going to do to the actual truck. Uh, there are a few other tiny things I'm gonna do, um, but some of those require more work being done to the body before we can get to uh, some of these other things. Um, so that's where we sit right now. Uh, how much time do we have remaining? 22 hours, four minutes, 28 seconds. Um, so there's still a fair bit of time left. It's actually going better than I thought it would. <laughs> All right, let's keep going. I'm also a fan of these new shocks that Axial made just for the base camp. Uh, all aluminum construction and uh, no signs whatsoever of any leakage, uh, which is really good to see. Um, that's always sort of a boat of contention with any RTR shock. So that is really, really good to see that. Uh, so we're gonna keep those on there. If we don't need to replace them, why would you? Uh, because this is a mayhem build and we like to spend money and do crazy things that don't need to be needed but we're not gonna do it. We're gonna stick with the stock ones. And what we've got here is a set of method wheels. Uh, they've got a weighted uh, brass hub, SLW hub. And uh, these also have the Three Brothers anti-foams installed in them. Uh, also got some IFR uh, beadlock rings and all of uh, Vanquish's scale hardware wrapped with these Proline BF Goodrich Crawler TAs, which are probably one of the best looking tires you can get. 
and also quite a good performing tire as well. Uh, I really like them and I think it's going to set this build off right. Uh, if you haven't guessed by now, that blue body isn't going to be blue for much longer. It's nice to add a little bit of weight down low as well. I opted to not do any modifications whatsoever to the actual portal axles. Uh, I had also considered converting to the straight axle kit as well, but you know, I'm just going to keep going with the portals on this one. I think uh, Axial hasn't released the change in the gears for the actual five gear transmission yet. I could just do it with a pinion change, I'm sure, uh, but um, I opted to just stay with the portals. Um, let's make it work, you know? I'm using this old uh, sticker sheet. I've taken all the decals off of it mostly, and I'm just using the kind of the backing because there are some decals on the body that I want to keep, uh, but I don't want to leave them on there when I paint the exterior of the body. So uh, we're going to take those off, put them on here, and kind of help protect them while I do all the painting rather than masking them off, which I think is just going to look terrible. There's all the decals uh, saved for now, uh, the ones that I wanted to keep anyway. Um, not entirely sold on the grill and the headlights yet. I think the headlights I'll probably keep grill. I may end up printing one for the metric and see if I can make it work. Uh, I know that the metric actually had, I think, an indentation uh, for the grill. So I'm not sure if that's actually even going to work. Uh, but we're going to print it and we're going to find out. It's the best way to do it. I've also started masking off the windows here on the actual body. Um, we'll also uh, mask the inside so we don't lose all those clear windows when we paint the body. If you needed any hints as to what I'm trying to accomplish, that front bumper probably says it all. Uh, what I'm hoping to achieve here is a modern approach to the classic SEX-10 honcho. Uh, while I won't be actually removing the bed, I will be trying to incorporate an original honcho cage. Actually, this isn't the original. I think this is the SCX-10 II honcho cage. Uh, but we're going to see if we can't find a way to make this work. Uh, whether it attaches to the body or to the chassis, uh, that remains to be seen. But uh, I thought this would be a cool thing to try and do and make this uh, base camp a honcho. Instead of a base camp, it's an optioned honcho. 21 hours, 29 minutes. So we're actually doing pretty well. Uh, getting all the electronics done, uh, getting some of the mechanical stuff done. There are a few things we'll need to do to the chassis and the body, of course, in order to incorporate the honcho cage. So uh, the next step, I think, is seeing how we can do that. Uh, we'll get the masking done on the windows, of course, and then we'll see how we can get this cage to sit properly in the bed and still uh, manage to fit everything on the body. Here we go. All right, that was a very relaxing dinner with friends. <laughs> I lost four hours by doing that. Um, so what were we doing before I callously didn't worry about the time? Uh, we're gonna cut out the bed, or lack thereof, and uh, see if we can make that honcho cage integrate nicely into what we've already got going on here. Let's uh, let's start by doing that. Uh, what I'm going to end up doing is just uh, trimming it out uh, using a sharp blade. Uh, score the Lexan just like uh, you do with any Lexan body and trimming it out. Uh, and we'll see where things end up there. I'm hoping that I can come up with some sort of nice smart way to uh, mount the cage to the body and I'm hoping that uh, the existing uh, screw holes uh, these ones won't work but these ones surely will uh, hopefully that'll be enough uh, to get started we'll figure out more as we go trial and error when you're under a deadline there's nothing better than experimenting
Well, after some preliminary cutting, uh, it looks like this is going to work absolutely perfectly. I'm, uh, I'm really surprised, actually, at how well this honcho cage fits into this body. Now, it sits a little taller uh, than I think I perhaps would normally like, but I think I can get away with uh, the Knight Customs roof rack as one of the mounting points. Now, now it all kind of ties in together, and I think that actually looks pretty decent. I think that could totally work, just as is. Um, so that's pretty good. That's successful. That's a good thing to come back from after a nice relaxing dinner with friends. Um, that's gonna look pretty good, I think. I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, now it's just a matter of tying it in, finding a good place to get uh, these body mounts back in, uh, because these ones, obviously, the way the honcho cage sits, uh, this would interfere, so that wouldn't really work. So I'm gonna maybe have to design and print uh, a, a more slim mount, or maybe I can just get away with mounting this lower on the uh, the actual shock towers. So that's what's going to happen for the next few hours, I think. Uh, but otherwise, I'm pretty chuffed. That's good. That's really good. I don't think this grill was ever really meant for this metric variant, uh, because it does need uh, a pretty big cutout in terms of depth. Um, that this really isn't designed for. Because there is no flat piece there. I don't know that this is actually going to work all that well. Definitely makes it stick out a fair bit. I think this was always intended to be sort of set back. Uh, so maybe we can actually do some cutting. Maybe some trimming will make that fit. Um, we'll have to see. Okay, it's 12.37 uh, uh, a.m. Eastern Time. Uh, giving me 14 hours and 21 minutes or so remaining uh, until this is over. <laughs> and um, some pretty cool progress here, actually. Uh, the honcho cage is fitted. Uh, it required a little bit of trimming to the uh, bottom side of the cage itself and changing the uh, mounts for the body posts. <clears throat> but it all kind of worked it looks it looks pretty great back there it's uh, a pretty much a near perfect fit um, we're still I still need to figure out a good way to actually uh, firmly mount it to the body I think we can do like one two three screws on either side uh, drilled directly into the actual cage and that should keep everything pretty firm uh, which uh, I'm feeling pretty good about that looks pretty awesome back there uh, the weird thing is it'll only take a 4.19 size tire as the spare which is kind of annoying uh, considering I have 475s everywhere else there's no real way around that that's just how the cage works so we'll probably leave that like that I think it looks great though, I'm pretty happy with that. I've also mounted the Knight Customs uh, roof rack on there with the roof rack mounts. I think it actually looks pretty clean, pretty tight. And uh, just for fun, I also put a Griffin radiator on the back there. That's from the EXO, actually. Still had one of those parts trees hanging around, which I'm pretty amazed about myself. Uh, but I think it looks pretty good there. Kind of gives it a bit of a pre-runner style look obviously not pre-runner suspension or axles or IFS or anything, but uh, certainly the appearance of a more desert inspired kind of truck. I had considered printing the metric flares uh, to do on the outside here. Um, I'm on the fence. I might set up the print and print it overnight and then decide in the morning if that's what I want to do. Um, yeah, I'm not sure. I'm kind of on the fence right now, and it, it really does depend on um, how the rest of this kind of comes together. I think it's looking pretty good, though. Like, it's definitely got a more unique look than the um, the base camp did. It's certainly um, more unique at this point, too. Tomorrow is going to be all about paint and then deciding if there's time to do any actual metal fabrication. I would love to do my own sliders. Um, I pulled these out of the parts bin. I'm not totally in love with them, um, but uh, they will work. So there's that. 
on the underside here, I do want to do the Mod 19 flat skids uh, just to clean all of this up. I think that would actually uh, make it look substantially better, so I may do that. Uh, and then inner fenders, I don't know that I'm going to get around to that either. There is 14 hours remaining. I may have time. Uh, we're just going to have to see. There's a lot of detail work still to do. Of course, the body needs to be painted. I think this is going to be a cool way to update the honcho look. So, um, yeah. Lots more to come. But good progress, I think. <laughs> All right, it's uh, 1.35 a.m. <clears throat> Eastern Time, and uh, I don't know, I've got like 13 hours left or something. 13, and, 13 hours and 24 minutes, and uh, I think this is where I'm going to pause for tonight. Um, I've masked the outside of the windows, I've masked the inside of the windows, because I'm going to do a little black bead around the uh, inside, just like Hemistorm did with his paint job. Um, what else? There are inner fenders in there now. Um, at least in the front. Uh, I stole those off my uh, Wrangler JL, and they fit perfectly. So that's a bonus. Oh, I mounted the, the actual uh, cage to the body. So now everything is nice and rigid. Um, it, uh, it's on there. And you know, you can lift it up by the cage, which is great. Um, so I think that's looking pretty good. I think that might be a place to stop for tonight because I kind of do want to sleep and I can't paint in the dark. <laughs> I want to get the painting done before I decide if I'm going to have any more time for anything else. I think it's important that the truck is at least. Sorry, could you say that again? My apologies. Not even. I'm not even talking to her. I want to get all of the paint work done uh, before I attempt any sort of metal work or anything that uh, I might consider frivolous at this point. It's really about making sure that I have a completed truck uh, in the 24 hours. I don't want to leave anything undone and then if I have more time, then I've got more time. Uh, flat sliders are on the Prusa. They're going right now. The mirrors are also going on there right now. There's another four hours remaining on that. So, um, yeah, I kind of actually, I looked at my list and everything that I wanted to do is sort of already done to the point where I can start doing paint. Uh, I'm pretty excited about that because it is my sort of take on a modern honcho. I'm going to go with sort of one of those colors, not quite tan, not quite, what was the other one they did? Did they do a green one? I feel like green or silver. Silver was the kit from the SCX-10. Green might have been on the second round of the RTRs for the SCX-10, and then they went to the tan. So I'm gonna try to stay somewhere in that wheelhouse. Let's uh, let's see what happens. See you in the morning, or right now. I almost forgot to mention. No Scale Builders Guild truck would be complete without an interior. So uh, I happen to have a bomber interior handy. The most versatile interior ever made, ever. And uh, this will work quite nicely with the sort of pre-runner-y kind of look that the truck has. Uh, two dri uh, driver, passenger, uh, that'll fit in there pretty well. It's a little tiny bit narrow for the metric body, but I think it's good enough especially in the time that I have remaining I guess I could have started painting this nope we'll worry about that tomorrow okay <laughs> okay it's morning um, some hours remaining which is good uh, flat skids are printed and look pretty flat, which is great. Um, nice piece if you're trying to like hide some elements underneath and just smooth up the underside of an SCX-10-3. Um, that's gonna, oh, wrong one. That's gonna do that just like that, which is pretty great, I think. Um, integrates pretty well into these sliders. I may have to push them out 
a little bit more in order to make them work. Um, but yeah, that looks pretty good. Uh, mirrors are also printed. They look reasonable. I <laughs> uh, just gotta trim them out and uh, stick them on there. But before we do any of that stuff, it's time to start painting. And uh, in order to do that, uh, last night before I went to bed, I masked the inside of the windows as well. And you can see that they're slightly different. Um, that way we get a nice black contour all the way around all of these windows on the inside. Just a little more profesh kind of look. Uh, Hemistorm taught me that one. So we're gonna disassemble uh, the cage out of the body and get the roof rack off and um, start painting stuff. Take the GoPro outside so we can actually see some of that happen. All right. Okay, so the goal here uh, is to just use the black paint to paint these areas in here. And there's nothing else, and it doesn't matter at this point if I get black paint on the outside, because we're painting this whole exterior. But we gotta get the black done first. let that dry and you know what in the meantime since I need it I might as well get the interior out here and paint that Okay, now that we've got that first layer of black paint down on the interior where I was doing the window trim, uh, now we can move on to the exterior. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to lay a base coat of white over the whole thing, um, just to kind of give the new color something to bite to, and also a nice base coat that will actually allow um, whatever this new color is to kind of shine through and be its own thing, because if I was just to spray it over the existing blue color, I don't think it would pop quite as much. So we're gonna get that white base coat down and then move on to the next step. Okay, now that we've got a completely base white truck body, <laughs> man, I'm tired. Uh, we, can, uh, we can start with the base actual color and that's a nice metallic gold. I thought it was sort of a nice update on the previous honcho, which was tan. Uh, and I think it'll work really nicely with the wheel and tire combo that I've got and uh, just sort of also pop really nicely against the black accents of the interior and the rear of the honcho cage. Okay, there are the Mod 19 sliders installed that uh, just makes this skid so smooth underneath. Now, uh, because of the design of these, they're not really designed to work with these old Cherokee SCX-10 2 sliders, but I think, um, I think it all kind of works good. They may be a little wider uh, once the body is on, um, but that's okay. I'm willing to make that compromise, I think. Chassis is pretty much where I wanted it to be. There are a few things I wanted to do and time is running short, so um, I'm not sure I'll get to them. I did want to change out the links. I did want to get a stainless set of links on there, but I don't think I have the time to actually pick through all the ones that I have in my collection and rebuild new links. So we may just have to uh, forego that for today. There is a lot of detail work that remains on the actual body. So um, I think if I want to get to that and get this truck finished, we're gonna have to 
compromise. Hey, it's another compromise build. <laughs> okay, let's see if the body's all dried up. So there's it mostly reassembled, uh, painted this metallic gold color, which I think looks pretty great actually. Uh, it's a nice match to the wheels and tires. Uh, front bumper looks pretty good there too. Love the roof rack from Knight Customs. I think that really sets it off. Um, the rear cage turned out great. Uh, I could not be happier with how that honcho cage looks back there. Uh, it just kind of really kind of completes the look. Uh, in my opinion. Sliders do stick out a little bit further than uh, originally kind of hoped, but I think they work. I think they're okay. They're not as bad as I thought they were going to be. Decals are back on. Windows now, well, that opaque. They're translucent. You can sort of see through them. You'll definitely be able to see the interior once it's in there. And what's next? Mirrors to put on still. Um, and then we're going to dress it up with some decals. I'm probably going to custom cut some stuff to kind of complement this body. Uh, I was looking through my existing sticker collection and I don't know that there's anything really there that really will work properly. I've got some old honcho uh, camo and I thought maybe that might work. It still might. Uh, we'll just have to see. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm pretty happy with the progress so far. There's still a few detail bits uh, to do here and there. Um, but um, we're getting close. Yeah. It's nice and, and solid. It's not like it's just sort of glued or like taped together. It's, it's all held together properly. So, you know, it's like an actual truck. I can take it outside and drive it, which is good. That's what they're supposed to be made for. Happy with how the windows look. I love the black bits that I did on the inside and the tint on the rear windows. Uh, and it's hard to see because there's a radiator in the way, but I actually did like one of those little like mini rear windows. I saw Chris uh, from Hemistorm do that and I was like, yes, I want to do that too. Uh, okay, so let's uh, continue on, get some decals on. It's actually, it's a, ooh. <laughs> I've got about an hour before I have to leave for brunch <laughs> and half an hour before I have to jump on a live stream to show everybody some progress. We're going to talk more about it than show it because we're teasing you guys. But that's already in the past. <laughs> Time travel. I'm Martin McFlee. I don't think I've changed this many outfits for a video ever. <laughs> this is like the most I've ever changed. But what a relaxing and enjoyable brunch after 12 o'clock. Uh, we're back. Um, I just pulled some cuts off the Cricut. Uh, I'm doing a big band of black uh, relief and then all the lettering and logos will be cut out. So you'll see the gold paint underneath that. Um, I'm gonna do like a big like diagonal slash kind of like I did with the uh, Curry logo on the uh, Gladiator. But we're gonna try a few other things too. Um, I've got this other old vintage sticker from the Honcho uh, RTR uh, from back in like 2018, 6, 17? Maybe 2018 actually when we did the, uh, the Honcho budget build off. I kept this intact. I'm gonna use this cool camo pattern because it actually works quite nicely with the, uh, the paint color that I chose there. Um, we'll do like a hood decal. Uh, and then maybe a couple like smaller bits, maybe like a, an angled stripe or something on the back there, uh, just to tie it all together. Um, but yeah, let's uh, let's get to putting these decals on first. Uh, oh, I also found all the heads that I'll need for the interior from the bomber body shell, or from the bomber interior. Uh, I've also got these cool exhaust tips. This was from the Yeti TT, I think. Uh, so I may try to incorporate those as well. Uh, printed out some door handles instead of using the stickers. I thought that was probably appropriate. Got the uh, rear view mirrors mounted there now as well. Um, I'm also, I wanted to add 
some fog lamps to the front of that um, uh, honcho bumper, uh, but I could only find one. <laughs> I don't know where all the rest of my light buckets went. Um, I had dozens upon dozens of these, so hopefully I can track one of those down and uh, that way that bumper will be all done too. Uh, all right, let's put on some stickers. So I'm just working at putting some of the decals on. I've already done the uh, the hood sort of, I don't know, not stripe, but hood decal uh, using that axial camo, which I think looks amazing with this gold paint. It just really kind of pops in the right kind of way. It just screams adventure. And with that in mind, uh, here's the uh, here's the cut axial adventure logo, uh, and I've uh, I just put I just printed this up in Illustrator and then uh, cut it out on my Cricut, and I'm gonna apply it diagonally here on the uh, the side of the the door, and uh, once you've you know it comes cut and you have to remove all the extra material, it's called weeding. Uh, for those of you who didn't know. And then uh, you just use this burnishing tool, uh, super handy. Rub the whole decal really carefully um, just to get it to stick to the masking tape. And then you just peel the backing off and your whole logo will be on there. And then you just kind of look at your, your, your uh, the, the panel here and just kind of like decide how much of an angle you want it to be on, and then just uh, stick it in place. And actually that might be too much, so we're gonna bag it down a little bit, and maybe somewhere in there is probably better. It's probably more in line with what I did on the other side. And then uh, just stick it down very carefully. Um, it's kind of key to not get any bubbles underneath the decals so if you can do your best to sort of press it into the contours of the body don't press too too hard at this stage just because you want to be able to move it around a little bit like it's gonna be tough getting into these corners but you gotta kind of do that there is a indentation in the body it goes all the way along here just make sure you get that and there's another indentation in there and that a is gonna go all the way to the back of the bed and then you can sort of work your way across the rest of the letters and you're just pressing down hard enough to make the decal be the thing that's going to stick to the body best because when the now what you have to do is actually peel back the masking tape and I just go really slow because I don't want to lift any of the paint just in case and you see this letter hasn't completely stuck the R so you have to Go back in there and give it another rub with the thumb or fingernail. Not too hard, of course. And there, now it's peeling off. And just go slow. Take your time. You're not in any rush. I mean, I am. <laughs> but you shouldn't be. Don't do these builds in 24 hours. Uh, and some of these are coming off a little tiny bit, but we can go back in afterwards with our thumb and just get them all kind of rubbed down perfectly. I may actually do that right now. Just give it a quick rub down just to get it to stick. And in true Martha Stewart fashion, here is the completed logo. That's what it looks like uh, once you've got all the masking tape removed. I put the door handle back on there and you can see it's a really nice contrast to the gold paint. I think it actually looks really good. I like the angle that it's on too. Kind of uh, exudes a bit of adventure for lack of a better term. I think that uh, I think that turned out pretty good. Okay, <laughs> we're coming down to the wire. It's uh, like 48 minutes until the deadline. And um, I think I'm almost, I think I'm almost there. I'm almost there. Just need to add these body pins here at the back. <laughs> Um, yeah, this has been uh, a very interesting challenge, I'm not going to lie. It's been a blast, obviously, um, but it's been a challenge. There's been a lot of stuff to try to do in a short amount of time. Uh, 24 hours isn't much, but I think I've achieved the goal 
that I laid out for myself. And that was to create a truck that you could make at home. If you've got some of these spare items just sitting around, if you've got a parts bin, this is not unattainable. And I think for the most part, like we've created something that did not look at all like the base camp did. Um, we've added some pretty cool features here and there. Um, some 3D printed elements from Knight Customs. Uh, I used an old honcho cage from an SCX-10 that I've had sitting around for some time. Uh, we've got a bomber interior in there. We cleared the windows so you can actually see the interior in there, which I think is pretty great. Uh, added some cool details to those windows themselves, some tint, uh, some great looking stickers, some whole new paint, uh, some great mechanical uh, and electric upgrades to make this truck even better than it already was, and created an homage to an older style truck, uh, the Honcho. And uh, I think it's I think it turned out pretty good. I'm pretty pleased with the results. Not a lot of fabrication. And honestly, I didn't have the time um, to do anything. And this took a lot of thinking and sitting here and printing and thinking and some more thinking after that. Uh, but I'm very pleased with the results. Um, I think it's going to be a nice truck. And uh, with that last 45 minutes or so that we've got now, uh, I think I'm just going to go over the whole thing and see if there aren't a few more details I can add here and there to just really kind of set it off. Um, but I think, for the most part, this truck is finished. What do you think of what I've done? Uh, is this something you think you could do? I think you can, if I'm honest. But throw a comment down below, let me know what you're thinking. I love reading through your feedback, and I try to answer as many of them as I can. And if you're enjoying this video, you like 24-hour builds, you can hit the like button, but I'm not doing this again anytime soon. <laughs> so hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and ring that notification bell so you get updates anytime there's a new video from the Scale Builders Guild. Lots more content coming, lots more stuff with Josh on the way too. Uh, I don't have any clue at this point what he's accomplished, uh, but we're gonna do a little quick live recap and see what each of us have done. Uh, and that's coming up very shortly, so um, I'm going to get a couple more things done here. I'm going to share what I've done with Josh, and uh, I'm really keen to see what he's come up with. I'll get Rebecca to put a poll up uh, tomorrow, Thursday, uh, and we can have you guys vote on which one you like better. Uh, oh, only thing missing. One of the front fog lamps. I just, for the life of me, cannot find it. I had dozens of these floating around. And I guess I've used them on other builds that I've gotten rid of, no longer have. So we're stuck with one. I guess this build is officially not finished. <laughs> uh, I'm pretty happy with how it looks though. Um, yeah, this has been an interesting challenge for sure. Uh, but I think this is proof that sometimes you've got enough stuff lying around to create something entirely new. Um, Thanks again to Axial for sending us these base camps for which we could do this project. Uh, Josh and I kind of came up with this on our own and Axial didn't really know about any of this, but uh, I'm sure they're gonna, I'm sure they're gonna see it. <laughs> uh, I can't wait to get this out and drive it. I'm actually really excited about it. Uh, the new wheels and tires uh, with those new Three Brothers uh, anti-foams, uh, the new Castle 1900 KV brushless censored system uh, I think is just really going to wake this truck up. Not to mention the Reef Sport 22 HD V2 servo and uh, IS300 servo winch. There's lots of nice mechanical upgrades on this truck that I think is really going to make it shine. So um, yeah, I think after after all of the stuff that I've done, I'm pretty pleased with the result. I think it's a nice homage to the original Honcho. And uh, I hope that Axial brings the honcho back. I really do. I think that the base camp would be a great starting point. Um, it's not too difficult to put that cage on there, so maybe we'll see one, who knows. Maybe we'll even see a licensed one. Wouldn't that be grand? <laughs> and there's the timer. We're all finished. That's amazing. That's 24 hours in the books. <laughs> That's crazy. Uh, I was just testing the truck uh, just to make sure everything was working properly. Got all my trims and throttle and everything set. So we are done. That's 
amazing. I cannot, I cannot even hardly believe it. <laughs> That's cool. That was a, that was a fun challenge. Uh, that was um, an intense challenge. And uh, something I'm not keen to do anytime soon, but uh, I think it was, I think it was worth it. I think, uh, I think that, you know, what I got out of this was that you know, there's a lot of stuff you can do without actually, you know, fabricating. And I think that's sort of like the lesson here is that, you know, you don't need a lot of tools. You don't need a lot of skills. Uh, you can just kind of do something pretty unique and pretty original and not really worry too much about, not really worry too much about having to spend a bunch, uh, especially when you've got a great parts bin. Um, but you know, you can make something pretty unique, uh, with just a very basic starting point. And, um, I think that's exactly what the base camp was all about. Creating something your own. And, uh, I'm pretty thrilled with the results. Uh, for the last few minutes, I was basically just tidying up the room. Um, I added this nice exhaust from the Yeti TT uh, trophy truck, which I thought looked pretty cool on there, actually. Um, that was fun to cut the pattern out and make that fit. Uh, added some wipers as well. And yeah, just kind of wrapping everything up, testing all the electronics. Everything works. I mean, it's not plugged in right now, but everything works. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to jump on a Skype call with Josh, and uh, I think we're going to present our trucks to each other, which is pretty exciting. Can't wait to see what he's come up with. Cheers again. Cheers to being done. That was 24 hours well spent. 24 hours, yeah, and I used as much of it as I could. <laughs> I'm sure, though, it's probably because you and I took vastly different approaches to our final product. Me. I, I, we talked about this a little bit in the live stream. I was going for like artistic, just use what you've got. Don't try to overdo it. <laughs> Don't do what Josh does was my right. like full on attitude for the whole thing. <laughs> yes. Uh, I, I, and I did exactly what you, what you think I would do. Other mm -hmm. than the fact that I didn't use my 3d printer once. And I didn't use my CNC once. That's crazy to me. Cause those are like, those are objects that you use all the time. I mean, I use my 3D printer. Uh, I didn't fabricate anything. So I didn't weld or braise or even touch a piece of metal, if I'm honest. I'm excited to show you. I'm excited to show you too. I think you'll like what I've done and I'm sure I'm gonna like what you've done. I think that what I've done will take a different type. You'll be like, I appreciate the work you put into it. <laughs> <laughs> I used zero paint other than the interior. I painted the interior. Oh, well, okay. Yeah. All right. That's good. I'll let you go first. Yeah. I want to see this thing. I want, I want to see what you've done. I like it. I don't. Mm. That is awesome that is awesome turn turn it the other way because i i'm i'm missing it a bit there you go there you go oh holy cow so wait a second that's all aluminum panel oh dude that's awesome that's awesome <laughs> interesting choice is it Bizarro World? <laughs> I think that cage on the back is fantastic. <laughs> oh, yeah. Not so quickly, not so quickly that you can just remove it. Now I'm starting to understand the fire. Fabrication wise, you knocked it out of the park as per usual. The shock mount relocation, amazing. The tube work, very, very good. I should pull it up. I want to see more of it. Like I, I need to see it more. Yes. Be proud of that, because that the amount of fabrication that went into that, that would take me a week. Uh, but 24 hours, that's really impressive. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty impressed. When you pulled it up, I was like, what did he do? He did nothing. <laughs> Ready? Yes. No way! Do you recognize the honcho cage? Wow. 
So yeah. I see the honcho cage and the honcho decal, the camo decal pack that it came with that you outlined. Oh, and the you hood used the I did the hood hood detail. Well. Yeah. What bumper is that? Yep. Oh, that's the honcho bumper. That's the honcho bumper. There's also a, a TT. Oh, uh, <laughs> the exhaust, exhaust exit. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> that turned out pretty good. There oh, that's nice. Yeah, it just smooths the whole thing out in the bottom. I could definitely use tight. that. So, no, yeah. yeah, that's a, that, that's a well pulled off uh, theme. You can actually like, you know, it's not like my usual standard of excellence where it's like, don't lift it from there. <laughs> <laughs> No, the color's fantastic. Thanks, man. That's yeah, amazing. That happy was the, the blue look. one, even. Yeah, yeah. Hardest color, color to cover. There's the SCX103 basic bitch. I mean, base camp. <laughs> In all of its new honcho glory. Thanks to Night Customs. Uh, thanks to Mod19. Thanks to Axial. Uh, and uh, thanks to Josh for suggesting we do this. This was a great idea. I'm really, really happy with the results. All right, on that note, thank you so much for watching and we'll see you again soon.